The hardest thing to do, and I, I've, regardless of sport, is when a former player, someone who is in the arena as a competitor, then has the power of those words to talk about the people now doing it. And it's it's a it's a major responsibility that's fraught with all kinds of potential conflict. How did you get past that? This idea with I'm going to have an opinion and if there is a play that should have been made that wasn't, I'm going to say it and it's TV and everybody can see it. I guess to put it simply that you're not behind that mic to make friends of the players. Yeah, I, th I think, you know, knowing what it was like, you know, being being on the other side and, and hearing both fair and unfair criticism, right? That's that's kind of the world that we all signed up for. And, you know, as a young player, maybe you're a little more sensitive to it. And as you get older, you, you kind of realize what matters and what doesn't. But all I've ever, the deal I've kind of made with myself entering this world is I'm never going to attack the guy, right? I'm never going to call into question, you know, call into question their commitment, their, you know, I'm never going to, you know, if you're playing in the NFL, you've earned the respect to be treated and talked to the right way, respectfully. And, and that's something that I feel strongly about. But at the same time, if there was a mistake, if the play was designed to, to you know, in some other capacity than the way you see it, and if a guy's supposed to run a route at a certain depth and he cuts it short and that, then there's an interception, you know, whatever the case may be, it's our job as analysts to inform the viewer why a play was successful, but then also why a particular play was not successful. And typically that falls on the shoulders of, of one of the guys on the field and, and guys know what they signed up for. And I, my thing is, if I say it, I got to make sure I'm right. You know, I, I got to make sure that if I'm going to call a guy for, for making a critical mistake or having a critical, you know, impact on why the play, you know, was a disaster or something, then I got to make sure I'm coming at it and I'm informed and I'm not just talking kind of out of my ass. I got to make sure I know what I'm talking about, but I'm also fair to the guy. I'm not attacking him as a person. I'm not attacking, you know, his career. I'm just saying, Hey, in this case, you know, Johnny Jones, he's supposed to do this, and he didn't, and that's why the play broke down. So I think as a player, that's all you ask is that the commentators and the analysts are fair, they're respectful, but it's my job and it's our job to, to paint to the viewers what's the mindset, what's the play design, and why the play was successful or not successful. To be a successful player, like grinding tape is, is part of it. Same thing with being a, a successful broadcaster. Did that make like the transition to this easier because you know how to watch tape and now you're you're doing it and it allows you to teach the audience stuff about the game that they don't know? Yeah, you know, that was always part of the game that I always enjoyed. So that, you know, to your point, that was a very seamless transition. You know, I, I, I always kind of joke the the real difference between being a player and watching tape and being, you know, an analyst watching tape is now I'm watching both offense and defense. You know, for my entire career, I would watch offense kind of in passing. I would watch other tight ends. I would watch other offenses who I thought were creative or did cool things. But I was never actually studying the the ideology, studying the formations and the patterns, and and really, you know, because I was spending all my time looking at defenses. So now, you know, after you're you know you're preparing for two games, you're watching two teams on defense, and then you're flipping it around and you're watching two teams on offense, and you're studying special teams. So there's a little bit more of like an an overarching study of the team, which has been kind of cool, you know, being able to, you know, talk offensive ball with Sean McVay and Matt LaFleur and, and some of these offensive minds who you didn't really spend a lot of time as a player studying it. That wasn't really my job during the year. I needed to know what Bill Belichick was doing and I needed to know what Ron, you know, when we played against Ron, what he was doing, you know, so that's been really cool. Um, I've enjoyed that part of the game, but um yeah, it, it, listen, if, if you put on that TV and you tune into a game and the commentator, the analyst, if they don't know what they're talking about, it's very easy. You can't hide calling a game. You've got to understand what that team is doing, understand their personnel, understand, you know, different, you know, philosophical, you know, decisions and whatnot. Because if you don't, it's, it's very easy for the viewer at home to realize that you don't know what you're, talk, what you're talking about. When you're at a game. Do you watch a live play with your own eyes on the field, or do you watch it live on the monitor, the same thing we're all seeing at home? Yeah, so my, my approach is I watch the play live. I, I watch it. So my setup is I have, you know, obviously I'm watching it live from the press box, from the booth, and then on my monitors I have a regular 
like a regular TV cam. It, it would be, in essence, the production cam that you would see at home on the broadcast. Whatever you're seeing on the home broadcast, I have a camera that shows that. Um, and then I also have like a sky cam and the sky cam is on a little bit of a delay, like a three or four second delay. So I can watch the play unfold. I like watching the all 22 with my eyes live. And then based on what happens, I can then confirm on the delay just to make sure I know it was number 52. And he started at Mike linebacker cause he had the sack because in those couple seconds, your play by play guys wrapping up his call, they're queuing the, the instant replay on your telestrator and then you know exactly when that telestrator camera comes up you just confirmed you saw it live you confirmed it on the delay so now when you go live on the telestrator to describe to the viewers at home you know why it was a sack or who got beat or whatever you really are confident and sure where the guy started from what kind of move he used so there's a little bit of a process there both seeing it live and using your monitors as tools that in those four or five seconds, you can piece it together. So now when you try to explain it to the viewers, you're very, very confident that what you saw is what happened, and now you can explain it as such. Are you harder on tight ends than other positions, and is that okay? I don't know about harder. I probably watch it more than the traditional. You know, I think everybody watch, every analyst that calls games has their own biases, right? We see a ton of quarterbacks. Obviously, a ton of quarterbacks call games. Um, that's kind of always been the way it's been. It's you know, there's a lot of them now, but Tr- with Troy and Tony and whatnot, and they typically call the game through the quarterback's eyes. It's pass friendly. You know, it's very pass heavy. It's formations. It's pass routes. It's coverages, and there's not a ton of upfront stuff. The, the fun thing about tight end is, you know, we, we were kind of the we were the middleman. You know, we were very involved in the pass concepts. We understand the you know what coverages are doing and how that ties in with protections and how that ties in with, with um, up front with pass protection, you know, all different stuff. So I try to see the game both from the inside out with the offensive and the defensive linemen. And then also obviously on the larger scale with the pass coverages and the, and the offensive, you know, sets and the, and you know, whatnot. So I watch the tight end more just because that's where my eye has always typically gravitated towards, but I try to point out, listen, when, when we, you know, we're going to give plenty of love to the quarterback. We're going to give plenty of love to, you know, I know you guys don't like hearing this, Devontae, well, now you don't care, Devontae Adams and the wide receivers. <laughs> they're always going to, now you guys don't care, but they're always going to get a ton of love. But I think it's really cool on a 30-yard touchdown pass when they come back from break and we can highlight, yeah, we all saw the receiver go make a great play, but did anyone see the left guard and the left tackle pick up that blitz on the that blind side of the quarterback to allow him to step up and make the play. Like that's the stuff that I think needs to be pointed out more. And that's something with our broadcast last year, we tried to make sure we gave those guys some love too. Greg, you got Justin Fields a couple times last year, right? Yep. What'd you think of him? You know, I, I, I think what was cool about seeing you, guys, you know, seeing the bears and seeing Justin is I saw his start. We called his first ever career start up in um up in cleveland and that was a you know that was a tough game you know we all were there and it was a tough game and it seemed like it was a very conservative plan and he was kind of handcuffed and they really struggled protecting him and whatnot and then we saw him later in the year against um against green bay in chicago and he it was like watching a different player it was like watching a different offense he seemed a lot more comfortable. I mean, oh, first couple drives of the game, Chicago came out and, and really was in sync, and he had some nice plays. You guys lost there at the end. That was, that was in the Rodgers kind of – that was the I own you game and all that. But it came down to the end, and, you, and, and Chicago played really well, and so did Justin. So it was cool to see him from the beginning to later in the year make that, you know, that young player evolution that everybody wants to see, especially when it's the quarterback. So I think the future is really bright for him. I think, you know, obviously they've got to get him a a consistent offense and a consistent philosophy that he can grow along with. But um, I I think he has a real shot to be a really good player at this league in this league for a long time. And I think there was a lot of traits that you saw, even when he was struggling. I think there was a lot of traits that you saw last year early on that um, that if I was a Bears fan would be positive to see. In, In trying to figure out his development and like how he grows from year one to year two, it's going to be hard because the Bears roster doesn't look like it's going to be really strong. So what are things that a player sees when we're talking about a, another player taking a big step that maybe a, a fan or observer doesn't? What should I be looking at 
in year two of Justin Fields? You know, it's, you know, when you're talking about the quarterback position, you know, so let's just we'll just focus on the quarterback, obviously, with Justin. Everyone's going to look at the box score, and everyone wants to see 22 for 30 for 240 yards and two touchdowns, right? Like everyone's so enamored with statistics and yardage. And, and don't get me wrong, this is a production-based league. You are judged by your production. But I think early on, right, and, you know, you think of the games last year, it's body language, it's control, it's demeanor on the field. It's, all right, you just threw a pick the next drive, does the coach allow you to come out and throw it the next three plays or is it handoff, 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 punt? What, you know, I think those sort of things tell you all you need to know, both about how the team feels about him and then how his own personal self-talk, right? Does he run, does he take the field that next play and the first time he has a chance after a pick, he just lets one rip and fits one into the gap or does he throw a bunch of little check downs because he's scared to throw another one. So I think it's kind of reading between the lines and not being so enamored with passing stats and where is he in the rankings and his cute. How does he manage the game? How does he handle adversity? Is he the leader that everyone on the sidelines is coming to when things aren't good? You know, it, those are the sort of things that tell you a lot about a young player. We all know he's talented. We all know that if surrounded by the right guys in the right system, that he can play at a high level. It's the other things that if I was a Bears fan, those are the things I would be looking at especially if you're not a team that's going to be competing for a Super Bowl this year or, you know, however the, the, you know, as you said, however the roster shakes out. So, like, to me, that stuff is so important in telling me what is this guy's future. And, and that's why I came away last year watching him. I know some of his games weren't, weren't pretty and they weren't perfect, but every time I left, there was something about him that I liked, you know, and, um, and I think for young players at any position, let alone quarterback, their demeanor and how they respond and handle themselves – is a great indicator of future success. 